Welcome to an overview about a very common and successful product in reef acoustic, our fragmentation rocks we found here in this sample. Uh, when we look closer to them, there are two sides. Um, on one side, it is a very successful ecological product because we're making over 50,000 of these rocks in one year, which means that all these corals don't have to take it out uh, of the natural reef. We can breed them at any point in the world. And uh, on the other side, uh, that means that we don't have to fly around them, around our planet. Uh, in the last century, when we start uh, producing reef ceramic in 1993, um, there, uh, when a man anywhere can breed 50 or 100 corals in one year. So it was a great sensation. And now for all of us, it is absolutely normal that corals are breeding at any point in the world. Now, 20 years later, uh, everyone can do this in his home aquarium with s these small products. And uh, we have breeders which are very successful and breeds thousands of corals. So we have also a big economical success uh, with these products because the value um, is near at the aquarist uh, as we fly them around the world because we're making the rocks, the aquarist in the next town make uh, the corals and he can sell them to the shops or directly to the customers. So uh, at the end, uh, reef ceramic uh, frag rocks are a great symbol uh, of success uh, of our material because uh, we sold hundreds of thousands of these rocks over the years and uh, they were a great base uh, to bring a new coral, live coral uh, to the world which is maybe in the next generation also uh, the base of living material for the next one. So uh, on the other side uh, we have a little production problem with the small uh, rocks uh, which um, coral breeders are looking for because they don't have enough place for all these great amounts of corals and uh, they want to have rocks smaller and smaller like this one but um, you understand when you want to handle them in this great kiln and we have to guarantee uh, the temperature of 1300 degrees also in the middle of these whole rocks here, which you see here, uh, these are 3000 uh, frag rocks, which is only one production cycle, uh, then it's a lot of work and we need a lot of space to handle it in this great kiln. But anyway, for the aquarium industry it was a great step into the future uh, to have artificial frag rocks and make a whole amount of artificial aquacultured uh, living corals and we don't have to put them out of the sea and in the future maybe we have more and more of these Well, let's have a closer look at the different shapes and sizes of fragmentation rocks. First we found here a normal fragmentation rock. Uh, it looks like a real natural rock uh, with a hole inside, mostly 8 millimeters, and it has a flat side on the bottom so that you can uh, put him at any place in your aquarium and it stands alone. Also when the coral is growing, uh, the current don't blows these rocks away because they are heavy enough and they are big enough. Uh, the next one uh, are reef discs which are very flat and have a little pin on the downside so that frag rocks like these every time you use a grid to fix them and you can put some more of these but uh, they are swimming away, they are very light and that's why uh, you need this grid. Uh, it is very successful for uh, coral breeders because 
they can breed a lot of corals on a small space and it's easy to handle uh, the whole grid as each of these rocks. And the last ones are uh, the well-known reef plugs, uh, the same pin like reef discs, you can fix it on this grid also. There are some smaller and you can put them into your reef uh, at any place, they are very small, uh, but you must fix them when the coral is growing. Uh, each of these fragmentation rocks are packed in the factory at uh, 100 pieces boxes, so it's interesting for coral breeders or uh, anyone who needs bigger amounts. But they are very successful and uh, I think it's a good product. <laughs>